I'm gonna take you on this garden tour in our front and our back gardens, where I'm gonna kind of show you how everything stands right now. It's early October, and I wanna show you guys these things before they disappear for the winter. Let's get into it. This is gonna be a realistic garden tour for our Midwest garden in early October. Things do not look fantastic. We have a lot of young plants in here that are not very mature yet, and they are feeling the stress of the summer that has um, been a little unruly for us. All right, I'm sitting on our front porch right now. We have decorated with some little pumpkins, and we've got some of our other fall decor up and some flowers. And I wanna take you guys through our garden tonight. Um, it is Friday night, it's about five o'clock or so. Um, and we are supposed to be getting a frost tomorrow. And so I want to show you guys the state of things right now before that frost comes. I don't think it's gonna do anything major, but I think for us, I want to have our garden documented before the next growing season so we can track a lot of these changes. So again, this is not going to be the most magical perfect garden tour but i want to show you guys our realistic garden um, that we you know continue to try to improve we will take you guys along and show you some of the things that we have had success with this year and some of the things that we're going to be maybe changing up for next year so i'm going to take you around the front and we'll get going all right so to start with here we have got a little combination planter with some mums i think we've got some kale back there we have some of these kind of berry colored pansies that are struggling just a little bit. I think we've got some older blooms on there. And then we've got some snapdragons. So I don't typically like a lot of the orange and yellow flowers in the fall. Um, so I wanted to try something a little bit different. Uh, there's a better look at that pansy. Just such a pretty color. I also added in, I took some um, of our Prince Tut in the back that has just grown huge. We're gonna have to cut down anyway. And I put those in there because I thought maybe as they age, they'd kind of, you know, give that um, nice little fall look in those as well. And then here we've got another one of those planters with a little, just a little scarecrow in there, just something. As you can kind of tell, this area is a little difficult to plan for flower wise because you can see that sun peeking in just a little bit. Pretty soon it's going to be on this side and sometimes it'll stretch over here during the summer. So we have to kind of be thoughtful about what we're putting up here because it gets such varied light. And we wanna make sure that whatever we put up here has some good opportunity to get some sunshine or shade, whatever it needs. We have another little mum here that is really pretty. It's kind of an orange color with a dark center. Hopefully that comes through. It's kind of coming through pink on the camera. But anyway, we are gonna be planting up these mums in our garden whenever we are done and trying to get a little bit more life out of them. So that is pretty much front porch. I do have to get a wreath, but I have to go find it in the basement. I'm not sure where it's at. All right, and then moving on from the front porch, I'm gonna show you guys our garage planters. We did keep the spikes that we had over the summer. They were just doing so well that I just didn't have the heart to take them out. So I'm sure they'll start fading pretty fast. But we repeated the same uh, combination that we had on the porch. So we've got those berry colored pansies, which are looking really good there. And then we've got snapdragons, little pumpkins. And then um, I added these from our Prince Tut. I think I told you guys that with the front ones, but anyway, I thought they would just add a little bit of something as they start to age. Just felt like it needed something else. We'll see, just a little experiment. Okay, and then going the other way, from the porch is the front north garden. This face is west, but it's on the north side of our house, so I call it the front north. And so we have got our three lagustrums, which this is our second year for those. Um, if you didn't see those in the summertime, I'll show that video where we did our first tour, and you can kind of see how things have changed in here. But you know, this is just still kind of in its um, growing stages over here. I I think the lagustrums are a little unruly, but I want to keep them like this for now and just kind of see how they do over the winter. In between the lagustrums, we have back to the fuchsia salvia, which we're gonna have to pull for because you can tell it's stretching for the sunlight. Um, and so whenever we go do our fall plantings and dividing and stuff, we'll, we'll probably scoot that forward a little bit. 
and then we've got another one hiding in there. So we'll pull both of those up kind of into this middle area. And then we have our lamb's ear, which are actually doing really, really well. It looks like they put on some growth recently. So I'm happy to see that. And then the not so great stuff. We've got Dianthus, uh, one there and one there. Um, I think that they'll come back next year though. So I'm just gonna leave that, that stuff there. Moving on, you can kind of see the Japanese maple is just starting to get a little bit red. So we're excited to watch those colors change. It's always nice to see. It goes red about twice a year when it first, um, when it first comes up in the spring and then again in the fall. All right, moving on over here, we've got our hostas that are doing okay. That is the second year for those. They're doing okay. They're not crazy, but there's something under there. Then we have the Crested Surf Japanese Painted Fern, which we just realized that there were some little squirrels and we kind of covered it back up, but we're gonna have to kind of cover that up uh, with a cloche or something. And then we have four coral bells or hookahs. I do not remember all of the names right now, um, but they were from our Great Garden Plants unboxing video. And so I'll drop the link to that as well in case you wanted to kind of check those out. I know that one of them, I think these are the Dolce Wildberry. And I don't remember what these ones were, but I'm pretty sure these two are the same. I hope that wind isn't too bad. If it is, I'm sorry. All right, and there's the view from when we pulled up to the house. I love having the planters by the garage. It's just so nice and welcoming. If you follow us on Instagram, you might have seen that actually somebody hit our mailbox and messed up this whole thing and said they replaced it for us, which was really nice of them to actually stop and tell us that they hit it. And so we've got a whole new mailbox and a mailbox planter. And so we have changed that out for fall. We have, again, some more kale, those berry colored pansies, some little gourds, and there was a mum in here, but I think it's, I think it is mummed out. I think it is done. But we just threw a little gourd in there and nothing a little gourd can't fix. And then down here, we've got the three lilies, day lilies. These two on the outside are celadoros. This one is, I can't remember, uh, something kind of pinkish. What we're gonna do this year is I'm gonna dig up this one and I'm gonna dig up this one and probably divide that put that here so that we've got three yellows and I'll probably take this one and, and move it to the back or the south garden just because it's not performing as well and I would rather have kind of the consistency of the same the same plant there than the ones that this one's really not growing very well it's got a lot of foliage on it but it's it's not producing any flowers so I don't think it's very happy there all right and finally I'm gonna show you guys our south garden a reminder for you this was just planted in May so we're looking at about five months old on this one actually a little bit less so maybe about four and a half months old on this one I we do not love the trash cans there but for right now that's where they have to stay for access so we're trying to at least just make this area a little bit better so we planted this Hicks U and we're hoping that it grows up and fills in where it's going to eventually block those trash cans that might be in the future after we've moved but hopefully for whoever has this house after us that will help them out then we have two golden globe arborvitas on the side which are just a beautiful kind of chartreuse color and we have not had any problems with these knock on wood this season so far they've just been great not had any issues that we've seen with them so very happy with those down here we have it was supposed to be two of the same type of nepeta but as you can tell there is a huge difference in what's happening here so i know that one of these is cat's pajamas and the other one we don't know so i do not think that cat's pajamas would be this big so i mean this is my hand in comparison to all of this so this thing has got to be at least three and a half feet by two feet two and a half feet it's it's pretty big um and i we just haven't had the heart to cut it down yet because they're still pollinators going to it um they're probably all gone for the evening but typically this thing is just loaded with bees and so i figured we would just go ahead and wait un until everything kind of dies off and we'll trim it back that way anybody else who wants to hang out and uh, visit the nepeta can and then we just found i think this is a weed this little pink bloom 
but it's growing all through this. See it kind of in here. So we'll have to pull that too, but kind of interesting. It's really only poking up in this particular plant, but my vision for this area was that you'd have this pop of purple in here. And we definitely have that when that's, um, you know, a little bit brighter in its blooms, but it's also looking a little unruly. And so I'm not quite sure what we'll put up here next year. We'll see how these grow back and make any adjustments as we need. Okay, moving down, this is the part where I tell you we are not professionals. This is not an established mature garden that is absolute perfection, but we're working on it. So this is Proven Winners Cat's Meow, and it really did not take very well for the first few months. And then the last month, it has just sort of exploded. And that's what that one is back there as well. And so I'm excited to see what those do next year and just watch them kind of grow in. Back here, we do have our clematis that is coming back. It was also not doing very well a few months ago and then started coming back. Another one to watch for next year. Hopefully it'll be nice and, you know, colorful climbing up there. Then womp womp, we have our sad looking little lime hydrangeas, which we're really not sure if the extreme summer temperatures where we had multiple heat waves this summer we're not positive if that killed it off or if it wasn't getting enough water um or what's exactly happening so this is also a little lime hydrangea back here and you can kind of see the back half of it over here is a little more dead looking and almost defoliated and i haven't spent a lot of time to try to figure out what's wrong with these but i do know that they are from good growers, you know, Proven Winners is a good brand. And so we're going to kind of see how they do and um, just let them stay this way. It'll be a little bit of winter interest. Um, and I don't think because they bloom on new wood, it'll be okay for us to just kind of leave that anyway and then cut it off in the spring. So sad, but they'll be okay. That one looks a little bit better. Just this one little section. So not quite sure. All right, then we have our dianthus, which is coming back really strong over here. Look like a good, nice blue color. Again, that cat's meow, looking nice. Nice little tidy mound. This is the meant to be Queen Nectarine Agastache. And we are going to take the blooms off of this for the winter. Um, I think it was a video that Jenny with Creekside Nursery actually uh, filmed recently where she said that you should remove these on Agastachys and coneflowers if it's their first year so that when they go into their winter they can really focus on developing those good roots and not focus on on any of the blooms so I think that's what we're going to do moving over there's nothing in here except some weeds that was where we had super tunia vista bubblegum and we pulled those out and we'll just leave that for the winter and do something else fun next year this is the wine and roses wajila Again, something that seems like it's kind of defoliating from the bottom up. So if you guys have any ideas on what that might be, please let us know. Um, you know, you look up these things and it could be a hundred different things. And so it's just kind of hard to say. But considering we have sort of used and abused this wajil a lot, we've moved it into multiple spots. Just the fact that it returned at all is pretty cool. And so we're going to give it another chance. Again, kind of just leave it like it is for the winter. And... Well, I might need to double check that. I don't know if I need to prune this one in the fall or not, but we'll see. Here we have the Proven Winners Denim and Lace Russian Sage, I believe. And we just planted this and the Agasaki maybe a week and a half ago. We got these from Lowe's on clearance and um, I know that they're really strong growers. And so wanted to get those over here. These two big clumps back here are supposed to be Carl Forrester grass. And I think we have a mixture with something else because we've got these different plumes. And so I don't know if these are only weeds or what we got going on here. It looks like seeds on there. So I'm not 100% sure, but for now we're just letting it do its thing. So that's kind of the theme of 
our gardens this year is we're just going to kind of let them do their thing, see what happens in the spring. And here we've got two mums. We picked these up on our shopping trip in September. I will link that video in case you missed that one where we kind of went out and tried to find some fall things. And we wanted to put these in the garden because they will provide some green whenever they aren't blooming. And so we'll kind of have that, that spread of green over here on the back as well. So that is the South Garden. Matt just came in recently and cleaned up the edge of the no dig garden, which is looking really nice. We will come back through when we do all of our fall chores and add some mulch around these plants and try to give them some protection for the, for the winter. Okay, now we have moved on to the backyard and I'm kind of running out of some daylight. So I'm going to try to get you guys down there fast and show you what's been going on in the back. So we pulled out a lot of our summer uh, annuals and everything and I'm just going to show you what we got up here now on the deck. So we have the Tradescania Zebrina. We are going to be bringing that in tonight actually because of the frost advisory. I don't want it out here um, in the cold. So we'll be bringing that in. We do have our little pot of just some random cuttings that we have there of some coleus, lemon coral sedum, mm. just kind of a little random mishmash of stuff that we kind of shoved in that pot when we were taking cuttings. We have still seen a few hummingbirds and so we left up the hummingbird feeder for now but it'll be coming down probably in the next couple days. I also left up the vermilion air plant just because it just still looked pretty nice in those few spots and I just didn't have the heart to rip it out. This is a surprise solosha that we had. I do not know where it came from but I'm appreciative that it uh, made its way here. I'm thinking it might have been from my mom's garden and maybe something she gave me. Um, I had some pink frost sweet potato vine in this pot uh, and that was something my mom gave me and so maybe maybe it came with that. But either way, it was a fun little surprise for us to, to see growing in the pot. Then we've got our two other moms that we have back here. I just had to deadhead this one pretty bad because it was, it was looking a little rough. So they might have a little bit more. There's a few more blooms on these but they're looking pretty rough. And then the fountain is, just ignore that for now because I just turned it off and we need to clean it and winterize it and get it. We have another mum here. I think this one is a really pretty red that, yeah. And it kind of fades, it kind of fades off to like a light pink. Anyway, it's a really pretty color. I'll put up a picture of it. I don't know the name of it. But Okay, then our green stock, which I pulled pretty much everything out of, but I wanted to leave this lemon coral sedum and show you guys. It has probably been six weeks or so since I watered this thing. You can tell because you can see how much the soil is pulling away from the sides of the container. So this is only received water that it's gotten from Mother Nature, the rain. And look at how well this thing is still doing. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I'm, I'm half tempted to just leave it over the winter and see if it comes back next year. Now it's getting a little, you know, scraggly in here, but, uh, well, yeah, but for the most part, I thought it was pretty cool that it was still like hanging in there after all this time when everything else was quite, quite dead. Matt is trying to get a fire started for us tonight. We've got a bunch of stuff that we need to be burning off here and, and getting rid of. Is it not working? Yeah, not that one. I got plenty of it. All right, I'm gonna keep going here. So, so over here we have the elephant's ear, which is looking like it's got a little chlorosis, but it's okay, it's almost done for the year anyway. The verbena did come back pretty strong though, so that's good. All that heat kind of helped bring that back for another flush. And then all of our zinnias, we have had so many butterflies playing in this area over the last few weeks, really. Every day we would just come out and they would just be swarming all over these. We've got these huge, huge zinnias. Really pretty, vibrant, purple, fuchsia, pink, whatever you want to call it. Down here we have some ironweed, which has been, again, helping those monarchs. Oh, and here's all the milkweed ready to go to seed. These are the seed pods on them. 
They're huge. About to try to save some this year. The monarchs really, or the caterpillars, were really all over it. So moving down the yard from the zinnias, we have boxwoods on either side. They're kind of being hidden right now. We'll see how they look this year. Uh, they were under some attack from some dogs, so we'll see how they uh, how they hold up. We have a dianthus. We have the same one here, and we have another one down at the end over there. We have three amethyst butterfly bushes. If I can get you to see that. They've been blooming pretty well, but the second one that we have has been struggling a little bit. So I'm not 100% sure what's going on with it, but it is its second year. We had to replace this one last year, so maybe it's just this location. I'm not sure. We have two more mums that we planted here so that we can kind of have some green uh, in between the butterfly bushes when they're blooming. Just to kind of take up that space, we pulled out the geraniums. And we still have kind of some messes from some stuff, so we'll be covering that up when we do all of our fall chores. I wanted to show you guys this. This is the pot that had all that big persimmon in it. And when we pulled that out, this was still left and doing really, really well. So these pots are going to stay where they are because they are so big, we will likely break them if we try to move them. So we will just see how it does over the winter and see if it comes back. But I was happy to see that it still looks like it's doing well. The view from the bottom of the steps, you can kind of see up. Bandit is helping us to model that. Thank you, Bandit. Then the view looking down the steps. I'll take you guys through this, what I call our back swoop garden. This is one of our two Aquapots light that we unboxed and potted a few months ago, maybe a month and a half, two months ago. And it has been doing great. I think Matt has only had to fill it um, maybe every seven to 10 days, just as we double check on it. But I mean, it has just put on a ton of growth and new blooms. So we're really happy to see that that's doing well. Now, Proven Winners originally told us we could keep these outside over the winter as long as we covered up the water access so it didn't freeze in there. But then recently, uh, we had somebody else tell us that we should really probably bring them in somewhere like a dry garage or shed so that it does not freeze and crack inside there. So we're probably going to do that with this one. This is the, again, the Proven Winners Oh So Easy Urban Legend Rose. Really kind of a vibrant pink fuchsia color really pretty and then we have another one over there as well we'll get over there over here things have been looking a little rough I think through the the heat and everything you almost can't even tell that that was a coral jade sedum I don't know if it got too wet or too dry or what but something wasn't something wasn't happy with it this we just planted one of our summer song fire finch cone flowers that was another plant we got from the great garden plants website this is the elegance lavender from my mom's garden which is doing really well this is the eddie blue allium again another one from great garden plants we got several this year to kind of put through there uh, put through the garden this if you can see through the mulch and dirt is the I think rock and round pop star sedum by proven winners again i'm just not sure if this is just what they look like as they age or um if we did something wrong with them so i'll have to investigate that some more this is the autumn joy sedum that my mom gave us from her garden and i'm definitely going to be dividing this up and putting it in other places because it is just beautiful and it attracts a lot of pollinators over here we have another Summer Song Fire Finch Cone Flower, still just really small. Then we have another meant to be Queen Nectarine Agastache. Again, we're gonna be trimming off the blooms from that and on the cone flowers over here um, to give them a good chance to develop some nice roots over the winter. We have some little spireas that were just little clearance plants that we got when we first were building this garden. I was just trying to get some stuff to fill in. We'll see how those do. This is another denim and lace Russian sage. This is the Rainbow Rhythm Sound of My Heart Daylily, which has put on a lot of growth this year for being its first year. I think we only had maybe one or two blooms off of it, but it has gotten really big. This big thing is a 
dappled flamingo willow and it is just very large but we wanted it back there to try to soak up some of the water that runs off of our lower patio over here and comes down and apparently they love to be in more bog-like situations and so we put that over there tucked in over here we have some blanket flowers they're hanging in there they're we'll see if they come back next year it's kind of cool looking though interesting for this dappled flamingo willow supposedly you can prune this back pretty hard and it'll come back next year i think whenever we do our fall chores i might go ahead and prune a bit off of it maybe to about here so that we can still have it for some winter interest but that if it snows on it these aren't gonna just lay down and get bad all right moving along back here this is the edge of night hibiscus and I love seeing these blooms try to come out and knowing tonight we're gonna get a frost. It's, it's gonna be sad, but that's okay. And so we've had a ton of blooms on this. I know Matt comes through and pulls off all the, um, all the spent blooms and everything and keeps it tidy looking over here. This is the Summerific Candy Crush. Just a gorgeous dark center with those bubblegum pink sides. It's just really pretty. This does not have any blooms anymore, but this was the Backdraft Pyromania Nyphophia, which was, I, I just loved seeing that one in the garden because it was, it would just stand up really straight. It was a nice structure and it, the coloring was so bright you could just see it from far away. So that was really cool. Do you remember what this is? Another coneflower? This is another coneflower, but I think we had some that were having some issues that we received from Great Garden Plants, and they actually refunded me for a few of them, but we're gonna just see maybe if it comes back. Um, they were struggling a bit when we got them, but Great Garden Plants customer service was really great. All right, this big standard rose is a burgundy iceberg rose, and it has just exploded with blooms ever since the Japanese beetles stopped eating on it. It is this like beautiful dark color. It says as it gets cooler, they will get really dark and more of like a dark purple burgundy. Oh, there's one. Look at how dark that is. That's so pretty. You can kind of see in comparison how dark this one is compared to these. Maybe it's just because this one's more closed up, but so pretty, so fun kind of just kicks off that garden the right way then down here behind the hibiscuses hi, hibiscus Ooh, this hydrangea is going through it i did not realize that all right well it's got it's got some stuff going on but this is the little lime punch hydrangea and we did have several of the blooms go pink and these look the blooms on these look larger than the little lime hydrangea on the south side but that could be because that one's going through its own issues so we are not doing well with our hydrangeas yet but we'll get there so uh, luckily these bloom on new wood and so you know these will stay up for winter we'll keep these up again i don't need to cut them to decorate or anything i just want to kind of keep the plant as it is and just see how everything does next year so i don't think i told you guys this when we were coming down here um, and if you've seen some of our other videos you might know but uh, we just put this garden in in june so four months for this garden and i'm going to kind of stand up here on top of the stairs and show a before and after here because I think it's filling in really nicely. It is not perfection, but that's okay. We just try to keep it real here. I sort of forgot to show you guys this monstrosity, but this is where I pulled those Prince Tut pieces for the front planters. That's where I got those from. So you can see where I just lopped it off. This thing is massive. Like, I don't think we had petunias and some creeping jenny in here. And I don't know that we could ever really put anything else in here with this. 
And this is again where this pot's gonna stay too because both of these are super heavy and they can just stay there and we'll put something else in them next year. Our ferns, we're gonna try to overwinter these but I don't know that we're gonna have good luck just keep keeping them in the basement, even with some light. I'm not sure that they'll come back, but we'll give it a try. It won't hurt anything. But these have been really nice to have under the gazebo. Uh, we usually have them hanging up here, but Matt's got the TV going. And so we took them down for now. All right. So now I'm gonna walk you guys over to Matt's iris bed in the corner. This is what I call Matt's iris bed because he kind of handles everything over here. And so we have multiple irises in here that they have not bloomed yet. We actually got them at a master gardener sale last year and we filled in with a few others. And so we're excited to kind of see uh, those when they come up hopefully next year. Back here we have a garden flocks from when we first started this garden in 2021 that um, we thought we had pulled everything out, but that one kind of continues to come back. And so again, we just kind of let it do its thing and, and see what happens. We have two creeping flocks up here that we're hoping next year will kind of fill and spill in this area. We put them in late this summer and so we haven't seen any growth on them yet. These ones that have the little bit of white striping in them, we have two of those. They're called zebra iris and I do not remember what those look like when they bloom. So this whole garden back here will just be a nice surprise next year. I know Matt's mom is gonna be coming down in the next few weeks. She is kind of an iris expert and so we are going to have her give us some information and her and Matt are going to kind of focus on this garden as we plant a few new irises in here and then just have her take a look at the rest of this and see if there's anything else we need to do. And of course we have to keep it fenced off because of the little puppies that want to just come up and run in here. There's one right there. What are you doing Maverick? Oh, 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 oh. Hey, come here Bandit. You being a good boy. Can I have your belly? Can I see your belly? Give me your belly. Yeah, give me your belly. I like a belly rub. Yeah. You want your belly rubbed? Or you want your face rubbed? You want your belly rubbed, Luna? Oh, oh, you're sitting so nice. Thank you. Luna, what are you doing? You three are very silly, aren't you? I guess that's how I feel. That is the end of our fall garden tour. Tomorrow is going to be frost, and I think from there we're maybe going to be in the 70s or 80s, so I don't know that things are going to look any better the rest of the year so i wanted to try and get this video done if you found this video helpful or you enjoyed it please consider liking and subscribing it doesn't cost anything to subscribe it just really helps us out and lets youtube know that you want to see more of our videos and our content so thank you guys for joining us in our garden today and we will see you next time